with jessie from nigesa.co.uk and not long now to the big day so i thought i would do some christmas crafts for using on the big day um so i've made some things to go on the christmas table to put the cutlery in some cutlery pouches never done them before never used them before but i always like it when we go to a restaurant um, and they have neat little pouches like this usually when we're abroad on holiday and I quite like it because then I nick it and then I've got a pocket for my scrapbook when I'm making it so that's quite cool so I've made three I've got to make another one because there's there's four of us for Christmas dinner nice quiet uh, Christmas um, and so I shall show you how I made made this quite simple so I am using uh, to make this not very much so a scrap of the uh, glimmer paper from the uh, autumn winter catalogue and just a three by um, six uh, bit of DSP cut uh, down at two inches so we've got a one inch strip which will just fold over to form our little decorative piece and this is from festive farmhouse um this is a, a i really like this set this is actually the first time i've used it um so um yeah really nice designs and apart from that one that says christmas you could in fact use these all year round really like the colors in that and so um, you get eight of these out of a 12 by 12 um a sheet so if you've got more guests coming for dinner um, they can all match or you could alternate and then I'm using a strip of the striped burlap trim that uh, goes with this suite and I just thought that perfectly matched it up okay so this bit of uh, cherry cobbler cardstock is it's our standard A4 in the UK which is eight and a quarter wide and I've cut it to eight and a quarter to form a square um, it might work with your eight and a half if you go eight and a half um, but you could just trim it down couldn't you if you if, if that if you're in America and that's your that's your sizes so I'm going to use the trimmer for this and not the scoreboard um, you could use scoreboard if you want but you've got to do some trimming so I figured let's just do it all on the one okay so uh, put that to five and a half and with your score blade just make a little mark then go to one and a half and again do a little mark okay then that one and a half mark put that on the cutting track and then put that point down to the cutting track down there and just trim that off I've just moved it slightly there by putting the trimmer blade up. I always find it's better not to cut into a point. Um, so we trim that off. And then the other notch, again, put the point down at the bottom, the notch there in the cutting track, and you're going to score. I'm using my bone folder to score. I find I get a better score. Oh, oh, I might have scored a little bit too hard there. I get a better score line than, um, but you can go a little bit too much there. But we'll carry on. Okay, so that's that's one side done, um, and now we need to do uh, this side. So we need to flip it and do five and a half. So you've flipped it. So you've just done this way. Okay, you're going to flip it over and you're going to do this side there. So your point at the bottom is down there. And again, you're going to go to five and a half and do a little mark. And you're going to go to one and a half and do a little mark. Then I'm going to flip it back to make it easier. On myself so the score lines are on the same side so we're going to cut that off again matching that and that on the runner take that off 
and then match the second little notch and do a bit of scoring, maybe not quite so hard. There we go. So we've got our score lines. So we're going to fold and burnish these. Get rid of this now, we don't need it anymore. I do love dressing the table and every year I do something different. We don't have the same table dressing year on year. And uh, I've got them all coming over this way. Um, so this one's going to be a, a nice sort of traditional sort of red, red and gold table, it would seem. Now I have um, that is going to be noticed. So I am going to um, cut myself another one. So I'm going to pause the tape because. I'm not going to use that on Christmas Day. So just there we go. So I just redid this quickly without the overzealous scoring. Um, so we've now not got got a rip. And so you're going to fold one side in and one side over, and you will get a sort of a natural curve. Can you see that that's curving up like so? Which is what you want. So you can poke your um, cutlery down there and so you're going to put um, if that's going over there I'm going to make note of that there and so I'm going to put glue up there and up there I'm going to use fast fuse for quickness I would use some wet glue or tear and tape or fast fuse if you've got it um, because um, you want a really good um, adhesion um, because it's going to be slightly pulling away and then we want some on that side of this one so that it sticks to that underside get that off my grid mat before everything sticks to it Yeah, so that's going to go in there. And this is folding over there with a nice little curve down the side, like so. So that's our basic cone with a nice little lift there. And then we're just going to lob off the bottom, that's the technical term, lob off, um, about half an inch, like so. And then you're gonna go about an inch and fold it over. And then, and again, I'm gonna put some fast fuse on that. If you're using wet glue, I would then get um, something to like hold it in place for a bit. Fast fuse sticks, but if you're using wet glue, you might need to put like a bulldog clip or something to make sure it holds in place. Then we take our bit of decorative trim, make sure it's straight at the front, and then pinch it round. Turn it to the back, and we're going to put a bit of fast fuse on there to secure in place, and a bit on there. And then this bit, eyeball it to be in the centre, and again, pinch it round.
check it is in the right place and there we have it and then we've got our piece of ribbon and we're going to take some glue dots Oops. managed to completely unravel my glue dots so I'm just going to put one at the back I'm going to put two at the back actually just to hold it in place whilst we tie it up. Oh, and I nearly forgot my, my sprigs. So add a little bit of glitz. So I'm using the sprig punch. And so I'm just going to cut out two of the gold and two of the red, which I think is Merry Merlot, isn't it? And actually this is allegedly copper, but it's more gold than copper. Um, and this is close enough for um, it to look okay with the cherry cobbler. So I'm just going to put a bit of fast fuse on the end. I'm going to do it sort of diagonally. And then the copper. lay that over the top and then I'm going to alternate it on the bottom so I'm going to put the copper first and then the red and then we're just going to tie a knot so we do the first pull at 90 degrees to where we want the end flaps to be. And then it should sit perfect, flattened. Fiddle a bit. That's where we want it, and then we'll just trim these down so they look pretty. Like so, and that's it. So we just need some cutlery in there. I've got chunky cutlery and it fits great. So that's that's ours all done, all set for Christmas dinner. And I might just make some other little table decorations to match this, but I think that will look lovely. Hope you liked it. All the details will be on my blog, nidesa.co.uk. And um, whereas it's not you, you can't order now for Christmas, you're too late, but you can still bar bag some bargains. Um, there's, there's things that are reduced in the Autumn Winter Catalogue and there are things that um, are going to retire and never to be seen again. So make sure you check it out, you don't want to lose out. Okay, and if you haven't already requested a catalogue and you'd like one, please just go on my blog and fill down the sidebar um, there is a contact me and request a catalogue form. Just fill that in and I'll be happy to send you one. And um, yeah, looking forward to new catalogue and celebration. I hope you are as well. Okay, bye-bye now.